Okay, folks. Welcome back, folks, to POV Pool, POVpool.com. This event, sponsored by West State Billiards, the Freezer's Ice House Challenge, right here at, in Tempe, Arizona, at Freezer's Ice House. And we're starting our first match of this event. It's a three day, 3,000 added, one pocket open tournament here. We had 50 players for this event. We're starting off with a cracker. This one is Dennis Orcoyo versus Billy Thorpe. I'm sorry, <laughs> Chris McDaniel. Billy Thorpe's in my, he's in the corner of my eye. So Dennis Orcoyo opens up with a break. This is the first match of this three day event. And we're streaming live from Freezer's Ice House. You need to come down here because there's plenty of seating. Come hang out, chill, and watch these players sweat these matches in person. That's a nice shot by Chris. Tony Chohan is also in this tournament. Max Eberle, uh, Billy Thorpe, Josh Roberts. These are some of the pros that I'm listing. Jeff DeLuna is in this. Warren Kiamko. Got also locals, George Teachea, Bernie Petty piece. Um, <coughs> Steve Lingelbach came from Portland, Oregon to play this. I believe we got Scott Frost in this, and uh, I, I'm not sure, but I think Gus Brezano is also in this. The young Chris Robinson from Ventura, California is also here. We've got a powerhouse of talent here at Freezer's Ice House, and you owe it to yourself to come here and visit these players and get to meet them personally. So first mistake by Chris. I don't know if that was the right shot anyway, because um, he was opening himself up there for, you know, he was really, I mean, it was maybe only worth one ball if he made that six. Bill Enright says, uh, I saw Phil K yes yesterday. He says, hi. Hey, Phil. Phil Knight from Oklahoma. How you doing, Bill? Bill Enright in the chat room, Eric Peterson, Bill Myers, all you guys. Cali Fools back, 85. So this could be a very quick game, as you guys can see. Looks like that 113 combo is on. Dennis may uh, f go forward for the two ball. Oh, he broke those balls out and his cue ball's rolling. Beautiful shot. So the thing about one pocket too is uh, he's playing for two balls. Is uh, you know you can you can just miss a shot. 
and the game turns around. It's not so much how well you play as a strategically, but how well you execute when you do have an opportunity. And as you can see, Dennis is executing. Much higher than average. And that's gonna do it. That's eight. That's eight. Yeah, yeah. All right, there we go. Five and a half minutes. Hoo-yah. The West Coast Swing also sponsored in part by Big Time Threads at BigTimeThreads.com. So that's game one to Dennis, folks. In a race to three. I do not see Oscar Dominguez here, believe it or not. I was told he was going to come play, but he may just be arriving for the 10 ball. Freezer's Ice House Challenge itself is also sponsored by uh, Divini Q's, Aramith, um, Simona's Cloth, and KB Customs. shot that was. You know, if he'd have missed, he might have been in trouble there. has a nice touch he really does he's very very talented player uh, I got the chance to meet him at the West Coast Challenge event in Fremont and a uh, very nice guy and uh, he's been hanging with some of the big boys here Omar Al Shaheen and um, he came here from Colorado I think he uh, plays out of the felt room in Colorado, so I'm sure he'd like me to give you, uh, give all the guys at the felt a shout out. Combo, self-destructed on him. Just overspun that tough. Uh, first object ball a little bit. So here comes Dennis. He has, uh, I think he's looking at the nine bank into the 10. Uh, I'm, you know, initially that's what he's looking at. It looks like he can avoid He can avoid uh, coming up above the 12. He's played the rock into the stack. 
And uh, that was good too. Almost fumbled though. And Chris is going to look at this. See if it. Um, see if it uh, billiards off of the four. I don't think it does. But he could uh, just play a, like a gathering shot here and uh, roll the 10 off the four toward his hole, bring the cue ball behind the 7-13. Got to be careful, though, because that line of balls uh, seem to be pointing to Dennis's pocket. Yeah. So he just babied it. Not a bad shot, not a bad shot. Probably the right shot. If you guys are just joining us, this is the one pocket portion of the Freezer's Ice House, just like at the West Coast Challenge. We play out one pocket first for uh, two days and then on the third day of this event we start the 10 ball which leapfrogs the finals of the one pocket so we'll be playing out the finals of the one pocket on the live stream and the 10 ball um, if there's any downtime in between one pocket matches we will play out a 10 ball match here and there and uh, also next up on the live stream we have Warren Kiamko and Bob Hershik Bob Hershik um, was in the finals of the 2016 West Coast Challenge One Pocket on the West Coast Swing at California Billiards. Good player from uh, from Nevada. Chris just played an, a very good shot. Unfortunately, he has not covered the 13. He's not provided any any coverage of that ball. So Dennis is going to have to. He's going to take this ball out. He's got to be careful not to leave any kind of a bank. That was a good shot. Move the 10-up table. Dimao19 in the chat room says that Feltz is a very nice room in Colorado. They are trying to have some one-pocket tournaments there. Bambolio. Checking in on the chat room says hello. Chris, Chris McDaniel would like to get on the board here, um, losing that first game so quickly. He would definitely like to uh, show Dennis that he is not going to give up without a fight and he's going to bring something to the, to the table. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a heartbreaker. Dennis ain't playing around. He's such a good shot maker. I mean, he he, he plays I mean, he's a world-class player, you know. I mean, how do you fade that when you're technically an amateur or semi-professional status. Chris McDaniel's Fargo rating is pretty high. He's got a 700 Fargo rating, but you know, you guys know that one pocket, sometimes these ratings don't apply.
You can't leave, yeah, it's true. You can't leave Dennis or Coyo any room. Uh, any of these players, really. Can't leave them anything. Just don't let them come up for air. Dennis is now five balls the richer. Playing for three. Chris is looking at the possibility of this game going up table, which is also not something that's going to work in his favor. So... He's looking at the 6-9, uh, which is basically, I mean, it's wired to the rail, but if, I think if those balls were, there, were not there, he might shoot at it. But once again, you're playing Dennis Orcolio, you've got to play a good shot, not play something that might be good. was a good shot very good attempt so Dennis will probably just bunt these balls away I don't think he's gonna worry about bringing balls to his side but he still brings balls to his side quandary here. Looks like he's going, he's looking at the one. Okay. He's left a bank on the three. I don't know if Dennis will shoot at it. If he does, No, he's not going to. He's going to bring his cue ball back down to the rail. Here we are. We're officially up table. It's official. sitting here sweating this right now. The two ball is available. He's shooting at the two. He's drawing it. Didn't want to hit the one. He wanted to come up under it. Here comes Dennis. Dennis didn't go for anything. Wait for a better chance. like to me. No. 
Psych. I like this. Chris is, uh, well, that's a free shot. Chris is in no hurry to sell out, but he, he did make a mistake here. It's going to be costly. So that'll be another ball for Dennis, which will put Dennis on seven. Chris is just looking at uh, where he wants to lay this cue ball. He's trying. Uh oh. He's exasperated on that shot. Dennis playing for one. Geraldine. Send John over here. Huh? Oh. My good friend John Hardy has just appeared. Lion is also here. I mean, it's just this is a powerhouse of players. Gus Brzezano is playing. Got some of the top players in the world playing in one pocket here. Dennis is going to owe a ball. Very nice, very nice hit. That was a great hit by, by Chris. Excellent shot. Chris is kind of hanging on right now to a match that got away from him a little bit, but all is not lost, and anything's possible.
you know, the um, West Coast Swing are considered the stepping stones to Vegas nowadays. We like to consider these events as a as a warm up for the CSI US Open events that happen in Las Vegas annually. At Griff's, where uh, we have the US Open 10 ball and 8 ball coming up. The live stream on that is provided by Q Sports International and CSI. I don't mind playing those shots, but I don't know how to get that cue ball as good as he just got it. <laughs> so that's just, you know. I mean, I take a flyer on balls all the time, but, uh, you know, and I try to control my cue ball, but uh, the way Dennis just did that nonchalantly. Is uh, just, just exceptional, exceptional. This was also a good shot. Chris has been able to use this three ball now for, uh, for the past three innings. Oh my gosh, Dennis, you're gonna, oh my goodness. I don't wanna really discuss what I just saw. I think you guys saw it too, didn't you? Aaron Moore, Aaron Moore in the chat room agrees. He says, wow, how hard he hit it as well. We're talking about that last shot, you know, able to be able to control the cue ball, to control Whitey like that. When you're shooting a shot like that, you're just taking a flyer on a bank like that. And, and you have like, you know, only a diamond's width to hide the cue ball. And Dennis just did it, no problem. Fat Boy saw it. Purvis, Jeff Purvis, Custom Cues saw it. A Manning saw it. That ball did roll out a little bit, didn't it? That's a good shot. Great shot. You know what? Chris ain't messing around right now. But Dennis is going to play this bank, and then he's going to leave the cue ball all the way up table. Oh, he's using the others, the other balls as a stopper, and still, Dennis does not fumble. I thought Dennis might play that a little softer, but he didn't. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get uh, Gus Brezano here to uh, fix the table again after this match. Chris McDaniel on the board. Come on now. I have no favorite to win this match. I just want to see good pool, and I want to see Chris McDaniel have a good match. Chris is off and running now. 
he might be able to string a few pearls. He's going to have to decide what he wants to do here if he wants to break into the stack and maybe line up uh, the 1 9 combo or if he wants to go round table for the 5. Oh, he overspun, overspun that ball. And it's like I was just saying a minute ago, you know, execution is everything. It's not, well, strategy is a big part of this game. Being able to move is another part, but being able to execute shots and make those balls, you know, you've got to make every ball count. Every time you have a shot at your pocket, you've got to make every ball count. If you can, if you can improve your shot percentage, you have a much better chance of winning matches in this, uh, in one pocket. Of ours. Dennis might, he might play the four ball because the, the five doesn't pass the 10. At least I don't think it does. Hello. Dennis is usually like 90% to make those shots, especially at that speed. Dennis just looking for a bridge. I think he's going to shoot at the 14. So we got Brandon Chef here. A 12 ball he can back cut. Open the door for Chris. All right, so Chris, Dennis owes a ball. He just paid it up. It's four to three. Come on, Chris. This is your out ball right here. This is your out shot. You got this. in the chat room says Dennis is on fire you know I don't know honestly I just think Dennis is just being Dennis that's just what he does you know of course he missed that 12 ball which I'm sure Chris loves Nice little bump there, and actually a confident stroke. He's a little out of line. 
But Chris can cut this in. He, he's just, I think he's making sure that he doesn't hit the four on the way in or on the way out. If he hits the four, then... Yeah. Okay, so now bank the 12. Chris, need, Chris needs two. We've got a lot of Arizona locals that, that are that are going to be joining us for commentary throughout this event, and so I I, I, I invite you guys to uh, to uh, to stay tuned. Oh no, 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 no! I don't know why he hit it that hard because he. He didn't come up for anything. He didn't come up for another shot. Dennis missed. Dennis missed a 90 percenter. I want to see Chris get on the board here. I really do. got to be careful he doesn't leave a return cross he's struggling he went back to his chair you know just flopped in his chair a little bit so we now we have to let the moving begin got a little end game here This would be like phase two of most one pocket games. They, they, they have like generally three different chapters. This chapter one is usually the um, the beginning of the game where, you know, you got a big stack, and there's some the first few shots or some some kind of dictate the outcome of. They dictate the tone of each game. Uh, phase two is 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 all about you know maintaining offense and defense and then uh, there would be a second phase of a game if somebody hasn't just run out there's what they call the end game this is kind of where we're at right now this is the end game where uh, each player is struggling to close out against the other Dennis needs four in this particular case. This is this is where Dennis is this is where he's almost always going to win is in this phase of the game because you just can't leave him a shot at all. <laughs> Bad roll. Chris has a chance to play a bit of a hero shot here. He can play this 11, but uh, he would almost surely be giving up the 13 if it rolls bad or gets in makeable position for Dennis. He's going to try to draw back. This needs to go for him. What a shot, Chris. What a shot. 
what I like to see. When players just come with it. The come with it shot. Daniel playing for one. If I were him, I wouldn't get too, I wouldn't get too, too bold here. He's playing it. I, I wouldn't have done that at all. Now we have no idea. You know? He, he should just lay up here. This is really important for him not to be scared of Dennis, not to be too scared of him. I know there's, a, there's an old saying when it comes to playing guys like this. They say that if you have a chance to your hole, you should take it. But uh, I think he had a better chance of playing safe in that shot and putting some pressure on Dennis than he had going for that ball. Yes, exactly. Pujol Banger says Robocop is still the favorite here. I agree. That's why. That's why you got to be careful when you're playing this guy. What a nice shot. That was a good shot. Chris Smiles says, my pocket. <laughs> so Dennis just won the game for him. <laughs> Chris gets on the board. It's two to one. If you're just joining us, this is the Freezer's Ice House 3000 added one pocket challenge. Brought to you by West Ape Billiards. JB Cases. Simona's Cloth, Aramith Balls, Aramith Billiards, Divini Cues, Ariel Carmelli Cues, Eddie Cohen Cues, Kent Davis Cues, Tiger Products, Billiards Boulevard. Hosted by Fraser's Ice House. And we want to thank Scott Frost for hosting and all the management here, real good guys, uh, Jack and Paul, and uh, you know, looking forward to seeing Lenny Marshall. We've got a, these guys have gone above and beyond uh, the Call of Duty here to uh, spruce the place up. And I mean, this place just looks nice already. But um, you know, they've gone way above and beyond here. There's a bleacher section set up for when it gets, when things get heated in here. And uh, throughout the event, I'm going to be taking some video clips and I'll be providing a little additional coverage for you guys to watch when we have some downtime. And anybody watching the FIFA uh, World Cup, we've got... Uh, Croatia and England playing on the bar. Come on down, get some, get some snacks, a little morning brew, and watch the Croatia England match, which England is up 1 0 against Croatia.
fix it. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Oh, also, also Craig Herman is here. He's doing tips and cue repair, doing a great job. And um, we're gonna get, uh, we're gonna get Craig Herman and Gus Brzezano to address that table roll that you guys saw earlier today, earlier in this match. I don't think there's a re-rack rule here at this tournament. I was around for the players' meeting, but that's one thing I didn't catch. And Chris does owe one ball, by the way, guys. He might be in a lot of trouble here. Also, I want to thank Lenny Robin. I'm sorry, Lenny Marshall. I want to thank Lenny Robinson as well, but <laughs> he's, a, he's another friend. But I want to thank uh, Lenny Marshall for uh, allowing us the use of this uh, this table, this camera angle that you're looking at right now. This is this is Freezer's Ice House usual camera angle for their their Facebook live stream. Uh, uh, we we took a look at that angle and we we just you know we thought why not Let's see if we can hijack this and save us a little bit of time setting up. So thanks, Lenny. Funny thing is, is I feel like, I feel like Dennis could have cut that nine. He just passed it up. Poor man. Poor man asks if we made it through the dust storm. Yes, we did. We made it through the haboob. is open for Dennis. That's as good as making, well, actually, looks to me like Chris might just be able to roll into the nine and make the nine. And if Chris can play this good enough, if Chris, Chris can play this good, 
He'll be able to leave the cue ball right behind that 8-5. Eight, Can he get there? He might have to play. He's jacking up a little bit, elevating a little. He really needs to find, he needs to find the gap here between the eight and the rail. He didn't quite get there. That would have put a lot more pressure on Dennis than, uh, than he's done now. Dennis has an easy escape. He'll just probably come off the bottom, come underneath the 11 play the cue ball behind that stack there over by the right side unless he sees something else the uh he's running around i mean he's got uh he's 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 in this tournament too Well, he played my shot. Hey. Oh. So, um, stand by, guys. Asks if Justin Hall is in this. No, I'd love to see him though. I don't. Uh, I don't see him in this. ball didn't want to stop. Just kept spinning, didn't it?
Oh, really? Is that what you want to do? Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> so I think we're going to pause after this game to address the table roll. Dennis is halfway there anyway. Oh no. <laughs> That's gonna it's gonna be hard to get out of. You don't necessarily want to take a scratch either. I mean, you could take a scratch. Or you could just play close to the stack so that Dennis, he's trying to bring his cue ball right back where it starts. I'm sorry, but playing Dennis, you you got to get better than that. He'll just play another gathering shot, bring his cue ball to the, maybe freeze it to the 12-7 or close to the 10-7. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Junior Flores and Trace Kane. Junior Flores and Trace Kane are the tournament directors here. And um, so far, smooth sailing. Everybody's paying close attention. And okay, Chris is asking if he wants to see a ref, if Dennis wants to bring a ref over because actually the f seven in the queue are frozen, which will allow him legally to push through the ball. Yeah, somebody in the chat room says Bill Myers said two rail scratch. I kind of like that. That's not a bad idea, too. But this is a free shot for Dennis. And this could be well and quickly the final inning. He hit it too thin. He played cue ball again. These two balls are not frozen. The four ball just landing where, where it did, on Dennis's last shot. Actually, it helps Chris more than it hurts him. Yeah, because now you can just stick here to the side rail and not 
not really worry about Dennis playing at it. I mean, you know, you might leave him a bank, you might... He's looking for offense. But the good news for Chris is he's out of that situation. Even though it's cost him, it's cost him a little bit, you know, it's allowed Dennis to bring three balls to his side. <clears throat> But Chris played a good shot here, I think. I think if Dennis here, yeah, he's going to try to stay behind that stack of two balls. And he's trying, Dennis was trying. To, to protect that four ball that you see. It looks like he's just done it, except that Chris can kick underneath the four. This can go, it can go in the pocket too. You have to hit this right though. A very experienced one pocket player you usually hit that ball with no fear. I don't know if I like shooting the 15 because it uh, prevents Chris from bring, from putting his cue ball in a safe area. So if Chris leaves him a return, leaves Dennis a return bank, that's not going to be good. Wow. He did more than that. Dennis has five, by the way, guys. Playing for three. Shout out to my friend Wired Space. Jeffrey, what's going on, buddy? What's up, buddy? Sorry to miss you this year, the West Coast Swing. I'm sure you had a good reason for not being able to come out and visit us. This should be over. Pretty easy shot for Dennis. Yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris shot the. I mean, I just didn't like shooting that shot. Um, he, he played it where. He didn't leave Dennis a bank at all. He just left him a straight in. But if uh, tournament director, he, even even if he see, I don't know. Even if he'd have shot that shot the way he did, with enough follow to get to the side rail, uh, uh, you know, if you don't if you don't really cover your your pocket with a ball, you're you're in trouble. See, like, okay, so say it landed there. Now that would have been good. Um, it, you know, with a cue ball a little closer to the rail, but at least Chris's pocket would have been covered. But the, you know, unless you really know that that's what's going to happen, if you're totally confident and you're good with those shots, anyway, you know, maybe I'm being too critical. But you are playing Dennis Orcoyo, right? So maybe, maybe, uh, maybe it's the right thing to do to, to to shoot for your hole. But I think I think Chris had a couple of other shots that he could have shot. He didn't like kicking underneath that four ball, which would have uh, you know been pretty good defense and very hard to execute though. And like I said, unless you're a good one pocket player. Unless you're confident with those shots, you know, some players will not play them. So that was it. Our first match of the day, Chris McDaniel and Dennis Orcoyo. And um, uh, I wish uh, Chris the best of luck in the rest of this tournament. Uh, he's not out. It's a race to three on the one loss as well. So um, I hope he makes it a few rounds. He's a heck of a nice guy and he plays well. So... We're going to 
get started now with uh, the 2016 One Pocket finalist, Bob Herchik versus Warren Kiamko on table one, the stream table, right here from Freezer's Ice House. We want to thank you guys for watching uh, the West Coast Swing. Your love is rated X. That means you're extra, extra.